Hello and welcome to the first in a series of web chats with Zurich Municipal's Head of Education, Paul Toombs. My name's Ed Dorrell and I'm Features and Comment Editor at the TES. Paul's joined me today to talk about insurance and risk management in schools, which is very timely that, given that, as we record this, schools all over the country are struggling to keep their doors open due to the latest bout of snowy weather. So Paul, please tell me a little bit about yourself and Zurich Municipal. Hello Ed, I'm Paul Toombs. I'm Head of Education for Zurich Municipal one of the leading insurers of schools and academies, and I'm also a secondary school governor. Can you explain how Zurich Municipal works with schools to assess and manage risk? What do those terms actually mean? Well, Zurich Municipal prides itself on helping and supporting schools to understand the risks that they face, and then also helping and supporting them to protect themselves from those risks. So we do that in a range of ways. Um, some of that's face-to-face, with our risk experts that go into schools to be able to help and support the schools on their key risks. And that ranges from things like operational risks, so the day-to-day -day risks that schools face, things like slips and trips, right through to strategic risks, so some of the long-term strategic impacts around us on a school, things like business continuity planning, planning around um, events that might happen. And then we also have a range of online self-service support tools. We have a bespoke website specifically for schools, which is called theriskcurriculum.com. It contains information for customers, it, it's free for them, and it gives them risk insights into some of these areas, things like slips and trips, um, things like bullying of, um, of students, and things like fire and security. And it gives them information um, and understanding around that, but also things they can practically do to be able to prevent them from happening. Um, we look at risk management and assessing of risk as a five-step process. The first step is to identify the risk. The second step is then to prioritise the risk. The third step is to manage the risk, and that's manage it in a sort of sensible and proportional way. The fourth step then is to monitor the risk, and the fifth step is then to review it. What are the main factors that schools should be aware of in general? From an operational risk perspective, the areas that cause the most amount of disruption to schools are things like fire and flood and escape of water. And there are some practical things that schools can do to prevent some of these. So take fire, for example. If schools um, ensure that their, their security around fencing is, is secure, then actually that prevents um, people from being able to access the site. And if they think about things like CCTV, that discourages people from accessing the site. And then thirdly, things like storing the bins away from the edge of the buildings, that then means that there's not material there that can be set alight easily. How about risk management? Will that be handled differently in a maintained school in comparison to the growing number of academies around the country? OK, well, schools that are converting to academy status would have previously had the support of the local authority. And the local authority would have arranged insurance for them and they would also have helped and supported them with risk management guidance. Schools that convert to academy status are now responsible for uh, insurance and risk management in their own mm -hmm. right. And they need to actually make sure that they've got plans in place to be able to deal with this. And so they're going to be um, responsible now for operational risk, I've touched on previously, mm -hmm. things like slips and trips and um, fire and security, right way through to some of the strategic issues that schools will face. Things like um, volumes of um, schools of children coming into the school, for example, and they need to make sure they've got plans in place to look at all these different areas. At what point do you come in? How do you go about working out what a school needs to do? And from our perspective, it's really working with the school closely as to what their needs are. Um, we do have a team of risk experts and go in and look at the key issues that schools have. And we do have a set of online um, self-service accessed information that customers can look at to really understand the risks that they face and some of the actions they can take to protect themselves. Given that we're in the middle of a hard winter, what are the most common types of problems that schools are going to have to safeguard against? OK, um, well, freezing temperatures does give rise to several potential incidents. Things like slips and falls on the ice and schools need to think about some of the preventive measures such as gritting the main pathways into the school. Um, schools also need to think about employees that might be working outside in wintry conditions and possibly driving as well in hazardous wintry conditions. And schools also need to think about things like pipes that might be exposed outside that could well freeze and they could then well thaw um, and burst and actually cause water damage within the school. So schools need to think about managing these things in advance 
to prevent the disruption from happening and to prevent the added impact of time and money on the school. This is the third successive winter that heavy snowfall has forced schools to close. What are some simple measures schools can undertake to ensure that they are more likely to stay open? Well, schools should have a business continuity plan, a plan in place for what happens in this type of incident. And that plan should look at things like how their, their staff, staff and teaching uh, staff are going to get into school in the winter conditions, how many teachers they need in school to be able to run the school effectively. Uh, they also need to think about who's got the keys, simple things like that, who's going to be able to open the school, mm -hmm. and then also then what areas of the school might be gritted as part of that. Um, what can happen afterwards, um, after the actual cold weather, is that the, the, um, the pipes have actually frozen, which mm -hmm. can cause damage afterwards when the, when the um, water thaws. Um, and so thinking about that in advance, you need to think about things like the boiler, is it inspected and maintained regularly? Um, things like uh, having a frost thermostat, which will actually switch on the heating if it gets to a certain temperature. And also things like um, whether or not you're going to keep the temperature on to a certain level. So there's an ambient level of heating, which actually prevents the, the pipes from freezing. And then also looking at some of the pipes that are outside that might need lagging to make sure they don't freeze. Head teachers and school bursters are busy people. They're certainly not insurance experts. How can they make life easier for themselves on this front so they can concentrate on the business, on the business of teaching kids? which is what they really want to focus on. Yeah, they're extremely busy people. Um, we understand that. I think with all this, really, it's about taking a sensible and proportional uh, approach to everything um, and not, not gold-plating things, certainly. Um, they do need to think about what they, what they do in advance of an incident happening because sometimes uh, it can actually take more time dealing with something afterwards than actually sort of planning it through in the first place. We're actually developing a business continuity um, planning tool, which actually is a self-service online tool, and that should be able to help the senior leadership team of a school be able to deal um, with these incidents and actually help them have more effective use of their time when thinking about uh, these items. What are the financial implications for schools, potentially, if they haven't taken out the necessary steps to protect themselves? Yeah, if, I mean, if you take a... Um, a major instance. So you take you take uh, the fact that there has been um, significant freeze, as you say, uh, as it is at the moment, and the pipes have actually frozen. It's they thawed, the pipes have burst, and it's and it's actually meant that um, a whole wing of the school's been flooded. That's a major incident. That's a major issue for the school. And actually thinking and planning about that in advance can really help support the school. Because if you think if that happens at the wrong time of year, that could actually impact on the um, on the exam results the school gets. That could then damage the academic reputation of a school, that could then lead to a uh, reduction in students wanting to go to that school in the future. And that has a knock-on impact then to the, 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 um, the gag that the school receives and the income they receive. So it actually can have a negative downward spiral if things aren't thought about in advance. So what I would advocate is that with these sort of situations, the school thinks about what they would do in these sort of scenarios. And some of that forward planning can really help uh, minimise some of the disruption to teaching and learning. Um, risk assessment is not your average head teacher specialism, however, but clearly it's something they need to go on top of. Um, we are therefore delighted that you're joining our forums in an, in, in an advisory capacity over the next few weeks, which seems very timely, um, to discuss insurance and risk management. Who do you think might benefit from your words of wisdom? Okay, well, um, I would hope that um, it'd be a sort of senior, senior leadership team level within a school. Mm -hmm they would be able to benefit from being able to ask any questions they want really around risk management and insurance. Uh, we understand that it's not something that's at the top of everyone's agenda, uh, but it's certainly something that's important and schools need to consider this really up front as we've, as we've just talked about. So if you've got any of those questions, things that have been burning at the back of your mind for a while, then please, please visit the site and, uh, and ask us. What should the school think about when it is shopping around for insurance? Um, schools should think about value for money. Schools should think about the type and level of cover that they want. They should think about the experience of the insurer. They should also think about the service they want to receive, and that includes the, the claim service. And they should also think about the, the, valid, uh, the value added extras that they might want to receive as well, additional information, additional services as part of that. And then they should evaluate all of that together with the price of the insurance premium. What are the benefits of insurance? And how can it help schools? Insurance is an enabler. It allows certain activities such as school trips to actually happen. 
But insurance really is about um, ensuring that the, the individual, the school, is back in the position it was prior to the insured loss. And that's something we pride ourselves on, is actually getting schools back into the position they were previously, whether that be a, a serious loss, such as the loss of a building, or actually just be damaged to something like their computer suite. Fabulous. Paul Tones, thank you very much. Thank you.